Welcome back everyone. I hope you've all had adequate time to recover from last week's video because today we'll be delving into another train wreck of a marriage in a completely different way. It's daring enough to get married to someone you've never met in person, but it's an entirely different thing to get married to someone you've never met at all. And that's what the show Married at First Sight is about. People are set up with their supposed soulmates by relationship experts. And apparently once in a while they might set someone up with the polar opposite of their soulmate. Maybe just as a prank or to make the show more entertaining, but we're gonna look at what has to be the worst example from this show, Chris and Alyssa. Take a closer look at the dead, regretful look in her eyes, and notice the I really wish I weren't here right now button that she's wearing. Now here's the thing, it would be really awkward if right away she realized she doesn't like him and just said no to the whole thing and called the wedding off before it even started, but you want to know what would be even more awkward is if instead of being honest, she just dragged the entire thing out for a whole season because she wanted to hang out with the other couples on the show. Because that's exactly what happens. She realizes immediately she doesn't like this man and does not want to be married to him, and in fact actively dislikes him. For basically no reason other than that she feels she was ripped off by the show because she wasn't set up with her soulmate. So anyway, let's get into this. A nice smile is really important. If I turned the corner and he had snaggle teeth, I would have to say this was fun. This was fun while it lasted. <laughs> Is there a dentist in the room? All right, not off to a great start. What's the deal with these experts? How did how did this conversation go? All right, so she's looking for a man with a nice smile, perfect teeth, so we should start to eliminate everybody else based around that. But also, I was thinking earlier, you know what would be funny? Man, it's kind of crazy seeing everyone get all emotional, knowing this is only going to last like 10 minutes. I now pronounce you husband and they're divorced. All right, well, that, that's it, everybody. You can head home now. Meet for the very first time, Chris. Alyssa's friends and family want you to know that you are an incredibly lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> oh man, unfortunately, Chris, that is not gonna end up being the case. Honestly, this dude doesn't do anything wrong and he seems like a good guy. The whole thing is just very embarrassing. She is honest and forthright, but you'll always be able to tell right away if something is bothering her. Her face will say it all. And if her face doesn't say it, don't forget about the button. So overall, the wedding itself is not that interesting. They both say their vows. His are definitely a lot better than hers. You can go look that up to see for yourself. At first, as they get to know each other, things seem to be going all right. You know, it's a little awkward, but there's no way it wouldn't be in any scenario like this. Um, What's your last name? <laughs> that's, that's a good place to start. Colette. Colette. Chris Colette. Okay. What else do we not know about each other? The other thing that I know is going to come up at some point. I, um, so I play disc golf. Like frisbee golf? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and just like that, it was over. As soon as he started talking about disc golf, there was no going back. I just love how he brought it up as if it was going to be something really serious, like he's been married already or he's been arrested. But no, he plays disc golf. I know this is going to come up at some point, but I'm a frolfer, babe. And it's just like regular golf, but with frisbees instead of uh, instead of balls and clubs. So that's probably the biggest like hobby I do on the side. Um. Damn, that was just a joke, but why does it seem like that's what actually happened? I feel like maybe it's a little too soon in the relationship for the disc golf conversation. Also, I just want to clarify, I'm not making fun of it because I happen to enjoy tossing the disc around every once in a while as well. You know, teach me how to play, but I don't think that it will be an activity of mine that I take up. So far, things seem to be going pretty well. You might be thinking to yourself, hey, this isn't so bad. What's the big deal? Why, why am I talking about this? I thought the same thing at one point. I really did. And then before I knew it, a brick wall appeared. Things first start to go downhill at the wedding reception. I don't know, it's a little much. I don't um, succumb to peer pressure. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's a little unfortunate, but you know, you just met. Maybe she's kind of nervous. Maybe she doesn't like the pressure of everyone else telling them to kiss. At least she just made a lighthearted joke and was polite about it so far. Obviously, I want to be here to find a husband and a partner. Um, but I think this is like a super long day. It's high stress situation. You know, we've only known each other for a couple hours at this point and- Yeah, but you know, you did kind of know this going into it, right? You're marrying a total stranger. It's basically just a stab in the dark. Forget the experts. All of the other couples that were on the same season as these two were infatuated with each other at this point. Of course, everyone ended up having problems later on, but the physical attraction was there. I honestly don't think she would be making these excuses if this was someone she was attracted to, because it's not like Chris has done anything wrong or weird. He 
just plays disc golf. So what? So after this, Chris sits down and meets Alyssa's mother, and they get along really well. She actually really likes him. The same cannot be said, however, when Alyssa meets Chris's friends. So, <laughs> what did you think when you first saw Chris? What was yeah, your first, first impression? First What'd impression. First impression I got from Chris was... Repeating a question that she has been asked may be an indicator that she is not being entirely truthful. This is often used as a way to buy time in order to come up with a response. I don't know, I just felt like I got a very kind... I got a very kind vibe from him. I feel like when I met him, I, I got a very... I was I was thinking he you know he's he's a person he's a guy I could see being this guy's wife for an hour or two he loves to bring uh, the best out in other people so if he ever comes off as condescending coming from a good place. It's, he's saying, I can teach this person something. So I don't think what Chris's friend said is bad at all. Everybody has little quirks and flaws and things, and they're explaining that it doesn't come from a bad place. But Alyssa latches onto this like it's a get out of jail free card and makes this the sole reason that she doesn't want to be with him. So this is after the reception and the poor guy's just sitting here in the hallway waiting to see if they're going to be going to the honeymoon suite or whatever. I hate people who are pushy and come off condescending. Do you see that tonight? his friend straight up told me that that is what he does. Man, all they said was that he might come off that way, but doesn't mean it. Everybody has flaws. Her mother talked about how emotional she can be, and Chris was just understanding and looking for ways on how he would make her feel better in that kind of situation. Such a turn off to me. I think we were in the elevator, and he said, like, I'm just Alyssa's side piece. Ooh. It makes me sick. Oh boy. So you see where this is heading, right? If this is the way she is feeling and thinking before the night is even over, can you imagine how much worse this can get? And you think, oh, she doesn't like him at all. As a matter of fact, she seems repulsed by him. She's probably going to want a divorce immediately, but no. And you know why? Because they're about to go to a beach resort in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and she doesn't want to pass that up. So she's willing to put up with him. Yeah, maybe a little immature. Like he wouldn't normally be my, my type. Um... Yeah, I don't want to get upset. <laughs> I like how she gradually goes from just joking about the whole thing to just realizing, oh shit, this is my life. I'm, I'm gonna cry now. We're just like so different. And I don't feel comfortable sleeping in the same room as him. Physically, it's not. I do not see one characteristic in him and what I asked for. There you go, there it is. She didn't get what she asked for. So let's take it out on him, that's fair. Just go take it up with the relationship experts. I don't know what the hell they're doing. I, they're just trying to entertain us. This is a reality show. Do I sit with him and like tell him this? Like, like what do you do in these situations? Melissa, I think you should talk to Chris. He has no idea what's happening. Or I could just keep telling him we'll talk later and try to avoid him the whole time. That way I get a free vacation, I get to stay on the show, I get to talk to the other couples. Maybe I'll even meet the one while I'm there. So for starters, I just want to say I'm sorry for yeah, making you sit here. It's okay. <laughs> um, I had a feeling something was going on. There's like been some things that have been said that um, like just don't sit right with me. All this stuff about disc golf, this this is not what I asked for. I didn't ask for some condescending frolfer. I want I want the person I'm supposed to be with, okay? That's what I asked for. That's why I came to a reality TV show to get married, because I take these things seriously. I don't know what this is, but I had a really good day today. I want you to know that. I'm sorry if I did anything. Um, I think what's best for right now is get some sleep, it's been a super long day. I try to be fair to her, but it seems like she has definitely 100% checked out, but just won't admit it. If you have checked out within a couple hours of meeting the man, it's never gonna get better, I don't think. I feel like there's no possible way this could ever blossom into a love story. It's only destined to get worse. I just like don't feel, don't feel good about what's transpired. Um... Yeah, I'm just a little bit disappointed. What is this, the Blair Witch Project? Why is she acting like she's been through some sort of crazy traumatic experience? And look, I would definitely understand her point of view a lot more if she was just respectful about it. There's nothing wrong with not being attracted to him. But there's definitely something wrong with not being upfront about it and then telling him that everything is his fault. She said, yeah, sure, I'll sit down and talk without cameras. So we sat down last night at 2.30 in the morning and she told me that we just didn't vibe 
I feel blindsided. I just didn't really like your vibes, you know? At first you had a kind vibe, but then your friends are like, oh, he's got a condescending vibe. But that's totally cool. We can just be friends, you know? Married best friends who hate each other. I don't know what, what's gonna happen at this point. We're getting ready to talk over coffee, but I don't know, we could be done all of 18 hours. Believe it or not, I still think this marriage ended up lasting longer than Chaz's. It seems like they're always about to talk, and then when they start to talk, she's like, I can't do this right now, I can't be talking about this right now, and then just leaves. I'm worried that you're checked out completely. In my opinion, we see it as far as we can through. No matter what the outcome is, like, I still want us to try to have a good experience, just see what happens. Just see how things go, you know? Let's see how the resort is. I'll relax on the beach for a while, and then maybe I'll be ready to tell you that I'm repulsed by you. So pretty. Oh. We made it! Yay! Wow. Oh my god, this is gorgeous! I love this, I love this. Hey, give me a kiss. Welcome to our honeymoon! <laughs> so now it gets even more awkward because they're around all the other couples, and everybody else is totally into each other. Not only is there no affection, of course, but she's trying to avoid him entirely. Take a look at how she's sitting on this couch. There's another couple there to the right. That's a whole big Ed's worth of space between them on this couch. Not good. This guy's probably like, damn, what did this guy do to her? She really hates him. Wonder if he's some kind of frolfer. So later on, yet again, Chris tries to have another conversation with her to see where they're at, and it doesn't end well. Super pretty. It's gorgeous but do you want to stay in it here how dare you ask me a question like that i need time to think about this i'm not used to dealing with condescending people who ask me questions i don't think i feel comfortable staying in the same room with somebody like that i don't know very well <laughs> like what Honestly, I gotta commend this guy for staying positive and making the best of this situation and still enjoying his time there. It's funny that she refers to him as immature because he handles the entire situation very maturely. We spent a total of 40 minutes together, and then you told me that you didn't want to stay in the same room. You told me that we couldn't talk about it then. I had to get the microphones and cameras away so that we could talk about it at all. I think that you've tapped out. Dude, do you not get it by this point? I just want to chill here in Mexico, and I want you to leave me alone. It should be very obvious and very clear to you by now that you're not going to get a clear answer. There was never a point in this process where you put in an effort. I think you went into this expecting the perfect I person. No, I don't expect the perfect person. And when person. you got somebody that wasn't, no. you said... Obviously, physical attraction is important, but it's more important to some than others, and maybe if it's this important to her, she should not have gotten married on a reality show. Marrying somebody at first sight is a pretty wild thing. You have to know there's a very large chance that this goes wrong. You know, I feel gypped. You feel gypped, and this sucks for both of us. There has been nothing but problems from almost the second that, that we met. What is she talking about? What problems? There, there were no problems. It's crazy to me that she can't just come out and say, look, you're a nice guy, but I don't think it's gonna work out like that. I'm sorry. Instead, she just tries to make him the bad guy to make it look like she's leaving for other reasons than the fact that she just doesn't like how he looks. And just- All are, these things keep happening, and you're telling me that you really gave us a chance. Yeah. Do you think I'm lying? Yeah. Yeah. So of course now this turns into a whole thing. Oh my God, he called me a liar. How, how dare he call me a liar? What a rude person. Can't be with someone who calls me a liar when I lie about things. It's just terrible. He just called me a liar. So this cycle of trying to talk things out and then getting into an argument just continues and gets worse each time. I find out that you're saying something to my family and my best friend it's not being respectful. She said that she had some concerns, that she doesn't think we're compatible. So the morning after the wedding, them and her family were supposed to meet for breakfast, but she never showed up. They asked how things were going, and Chris told them the truth, which is that Alyssa has some concerns and doesn't feel that they're compatible, and now this is disrespectful, apparently. I wasn't gonna lie to your mother and Taylor. But it's not lying. If they say, hey, how's it going? Or how, do you, how, how would I respond to, hey, how's it going? How was your wedding night? Right, and you can say, you know, it wasn't the best. Oh my god, man, why is he even trying anymore? This is hard to watch. So let us continue. The show plans activities for them to do together, like snorkeling, but of course she doesn't want to do that. She just kind of mopes around for a while. I think I remember at one point her mother calls and tells her to be nicer to Chris and to not make herself look bad. You're like a little mini chihuahua that you just don't want to play with. I'm mad at my mom right now. What happened? 
I called her and I was like, I don't want to go swimming with him. I was like, that's not an activity and I don't feel comfortable doing it. This is like a child's dialogue right here. I understand not being comfortable sleeping in the same bed or being affectionate if you don't like this guy, but saying you're uncomfortable just going snorkeling? Look, I just don't feel comfortable snorkeling with condescending people. I don't like condescending people. I don't like snorkeling. I don't like snorkeling condescending frolfers. And she's like, keep saying to me like, you don't want to come off a certain way on TV. I'm like, I have literally been the nicest person to literally everyone. Two literallys. Damn, she means it. I, and I have to agree. She has literally been the nicest person I've ever seen in my life. And I'm stuck here. Like, it's raining. I don't swimming with him. Like, I, I'm not happy. Okay, can you tell him not to come over here right now? Yeah. I don't like him. Literally been the nicest person. She's trying to make him out to seem so horrible, but he's just some normal guy. Even her mother was trying to tell her that she thinks he's good for her and that she should give him a chance. So in the next scene, the show finally got them to do something together. They're playing tennis, which is good, I guess, because she doesn't need to be near him. And something I need to mention is after the honeymoon, all of the couples will move into an apartment together for, I think, a month or two. Um, I know that one of the things that I wanted to talk about is what happens sort of after the honeymoon normally i know that we'd be expected to move into an apartment together mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that so based on how things have gone so far you can probably guess how this conversation is going to go here's a fun little challenge try to pinpoint the exact moment or sentence that she's going to say is when he crossed some sort of line or said something disrespectful or this is the end of the conversation i don't i don't feel comfortable moving into an apartment together. oh man there's so much use of the word uncomfortable how many times has she been uncomfortable with something i get it um, I want you to do what you're comfortable with. Um, when I think of sort of what I had committed to early in the process, it included me. I want to stop for one second. All right, there it is. So what did he do, everybody? Did you catch that? He, he said something wrong. It's very subtle. So subtle, in fact, that one might even say it doesn't exist. I already don't like where this conversation's going with, like, I was committed insinuating that I'm not, so. I don't even know if that's where he was going with it, but it's 100% true. You can't claim to be committed and then check out like two hours into it. We both want to live in this apartment, and just because we don't want to live there together, it seems like you've made a decision without me that you are moving in and I'm not. No, you can move in if you want. So now I guess she's saying it's unfair if he moves into the apartment just because she doesn't want to live with him. The whole point of the show was for them to move into an apartment as a married couple, not for them to take turns living there. Right, but that's like not. That's I not know what you're I'm not saying, comfortable so. with that. It sounds like you're in a tough spot and have a decision to make. Unless, okay. I'm, unless I mean, I'm told. I don't, I don't really like this, so I don't like what, where this is going. Oh man, this is exhausting to watch. What, what does he have to say for her not to get upset with him? What does he have to do? Rearrange his face? What does she want? It's crazy the entire reason she's treating him like this is just because she doesn't like how he looks, and that's, that's it. Maybe she doesn't like aspects of his personality, but there's no way he's done anything to warrant this type of disliking. So yet again, she runs over to the corner to talk to the camera guys while Chris just has to sit there awkwardly. I love the other girls, and like, I want to be a part of it with them yeah. and so like if they all are like last minute like oh want to come over like i can't just come over so now she's crying because she can't be a part of this and can't hang out with the other women on the show i thought she said she was here for the right reasons and here to find a husband and all that if that were true by this point she definitely would have left she said she's unhappy multiple times okay but the whole point of this is to move in with your spouse like why is that fair that i get to not live there because I don't want to live with you because we're not compatible. What, what is she even talking about? If you aren't compatible, the marriage is over, you leave the show. That's kind of how it works. Why, why the hell would you get to move in by yourself? If you can't be kind, then don't talk to me. Ugh, and look at his hand gestures right now. Even that is like, it's aggressive. Yeah, look how aggressive this guy is. Look at these aggressive hand gestures. I've never seen such aggression. It's so funny because swinging your arms like that is like the least intimidating thing ever. If I see some guy doing that, I'm like, okay, that guy is not a threat to me. He's just doing hand gestures. No, like, he's like pointing, like, it's just like, ugh. Look how he's pointing. It's so unsettling and disturbing. Nobody just points at stuff like that unless they have something to hide. So everything just kind of continues like this for the rest of their honeymoon. And then when they go back to the apartment, I don't think she ever stays there. I'm pretty sure he does. He definitely should have called it off sooner because she drags this out to the very end until they finally ask them if they are going to stay married or get divorced because that's how it works at the end of the show. I want a divorce. Okay. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Here we go again. Come on, give me a break. I, I can't take this anymore. 
I just feel like I worked so hard to get here. <laughs> And like, I never thought this would be the outcome for me. I just wanted everything to work out. I, I worked so hard to get here, and then the frolf, and then the snorkel. Well, there it is, everybody. That's the story of Chris and Alyssa. I know it might not have been as exciting and sensational as some of the 90 Day and Love After Lockup videos, but I found their story to be pretty interesting, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the podcast. The links will be in the description, and I will see you in the next video. literally been the nicest person to literally everyone and she's like you're being difficult